Live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE. Covering Inforum DC 2018. Brought to you by Infor. Well, good afternoon, and welcome back here on theCUBE as we continue our coverage here at Inform 2018, live from Washington, D.C. We're in the Washington Convention Center, um, centrally located, I gotta tell you, the White House less than a mile that way, Capitol Hill's just right up the street as well. We're kind of caught in the middle. Bad spot to be these days. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're not setting the tone for this. We'll leave that alone. <laughs> I like being in the middle, personally. <laughs> I'll take it from both we sides. We sit in the middle of the road, so it's a six inch yellow line, you get equally hard uh, from both sides. So we, Bring it on. We'll stay with you. Dave Vellante, John Walls, and Rod Johnson, who is the EVP of uh, Manufacturing and Supply Chain and the GT Nexus Business Unit at N4. Rod, good to see you, sir. Great to be here, thanks How, guys. You, you're okay with being in the middle? Yeah, sure. Just, yeah, just yeah independent course. thought. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I love yeah, it. Right. Middle of the road. It's so you're the new be. kid on the block, right? Uh, One of them, yeah. You, you've been here uh, just uh, at Infor for a few months now, assuming the EVP role. How's yeah. it been for you so far? Hey, it's been a, a breath of fresh air. I was uh, 11 years with one of our competitors, um, the Oracle Corporation, and it's like quite a breath of fresh air. Um, go with a company that's agile, um, innovative, uh, much more customer centric. Um, you know, I think uh, the timing is perfect for a company like Infor that's you know, you know, really growing up in, in these key industries and, and working with customers for over decades and now, now it's made this transition to the cloud. And now, now I think the, all the market's waking up. It's not just CRM or HR, they're looking at how do I, how do I take advantage of all this innovation, the clouds of the platform, and who's the companies that really un understand our type of business, whether you're a distribution company or a food company or a, um, you know an A and D company, so it's a great time to be here. There's a there's a lot of um, a lot of good energy, a lot of good innovation, a lot of good buzz from the the customers about what we're doing. Necessity so. is the mother of invention, yeah. as the saying goes. I mean, you're right that the model of just having an install base that you can have locked in and and, and, and just keep milking is very hard to do these days, unless you know, some of the private equity guys have done it, that's clearly not the case yeah. here, here at Infor. You know, Oracle is successful at it, you know, I think it's because they do spend a lot of money in R&D, but boy oh boy, that model, you can't just go and, and reinvent that, you're right. going to fail. Right. And if you're trying to hold on to that model, you know, maybe they're the exception that proves the rule, but you're going to be toast, you know, right. in the long run. So right. it's, you know, you see what Amazon's doing, you yeah. see what Microsoft, how Microsoft completely pivoted away from that right. model. Right, And Infor's riding that wave. Right, right. Hey, this is a business model. Yeah. Fundamental business model change. You know, we can talk a lot about the, the technology, but transitioning from a, a product company that sells a license that sits on a maintenance base, is a model that's you know no longer viable for what customers expect. They want a service provider that's delivering continuous innovation and service, and that's a big big change. It's a big change to uh, how we how we engage with our customers, how we support them, the service levels we're committing to. So um, you know, I lived through a bunch of that stuff at Oracle, transitioning the cloud at a role you know, for the last six years, doing that both from a sales and a you know, global strategy role and. You know, here we're trying to we're trying to do it better, faster, um, and um, never lose sight of the customer. So you service the manufacturing yeah. sector. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's still a lot of Infor's business is that you know install base and that maintenance, and and you are going to you're in the process of transitioning those customers. So yeah. that takes a lot of care, a lot of feeding, because anytime there's a transition, right. Everybody wants a piece of that action. So how's that going? What's the conversation like? And and why should they stay with Infor? Well, I mean, the conversation is, um, I mean, one, we really believe in a, a pragmatic, business-led path to the cloud. There's not going to be any forced march, no technology agenda that's going to drive this. It's got to be driven by value. Mm -hmm. We've got we've to present a business case to them that makes sense, that makes them more productive, now allows them to better engage with their customers, delivers innovation to their supply chain. So that, that's, that's what we're spending a lot of time talking about, um, is you know, what's the case for change, what's the business case for change. Um, I mean, all of the stuff about operating the cloud, the service levels, potential total cost of is great, but at um, the end of the day, we deal with pretty, we're dealing with manufacturers, they're pretty down to earth. Um, they know that they make their money building stuff and shipping stuff and servicing that, that product. So we got to be engaged at that level to show them how we help them do that, do that better. Um, and, and, and yeah, I think the excitement 
is growing, that they, they recognize that um, there is real net new business value, new innovation that, that can really help their business. So let's talk about that. I mean, yeah. force march is a, is, a, is a powerful phrase, and you certainly see that in the industry. Thinking about supply chain and the opportunities to uh, drive even more efficiencies uh, out of the supply chain, maybe you know, through automation, we've heard a lot about RPA, yeah. maybe even bring back some of that offshore manufacturing. Right. That's certainly a conversation right. that's going on in your world. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so one of our, you know, one of our diamonds in the in the Infor portfolio is a, is a, is a product called GT Nexus, mm -hmm. which is uh, been around for about 20 years. Um, we have 65,000 companies around the world operating on a common network-based platform that provides supply chain visibility, supplies uh, supply chain uh, financial processing, um, uh, connects brands to their manufacturers to provide all the visibility and, and control in that. So that's a powerful capability because, you know, you're right, it's an incredibly dynamic time, you know, with the change of trade wars, um, weather events that are ever increasing, the supply chain is a very hard thing to manage. So, if, you know, the asset is we've got a platform that enables companies to, you know, connect much deeper in their supply chain and use that information to make far better decisions on how they get their products to their customer at the right, at the right cost. So, um, and I see, you know, the supply chain market, I, mean, I always think of this, you know, transition to cloud and waves, you know, we had the, the first, you know, wave breaking was the sales, then the HR and the finance function. Operations and supply chain is the one that's cresting on the, uh, on the horizon. And, um, you know, keep that going, you know, we've got our surfboards in the water, uh, we've got great capability and, um, you know, really, really excited about what we can do for our clients. You got to ride the waves or you become <laughs> driftwood. And how big is that wave? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, well, you, hey, that's you, the biggest market, right? Yeah. I mean, you look at, you know, look at the size of the en enterprise software spend. Core ERP supply chain industry functionality is the big, the big piece. Um, it's probably two, you know, it's probably combine HR, CRM, financials together, and it's not even as big as sort of the industry supply chain, manufacturing, procurement market, um, core ERP market. So it's big, it's a big opportunity. It but it requires a much more sophisticated response because you talk to our customers like, hey, we operate our plants 365 days a year, you know, three shifts sometimes in peak seasons. We can't afford an environment that isn't pure mission critical, that doesn't step up to service levels. So, you know, we're working really hard to, you know, address the mission critical system challenge, not just the uh, benefits and payroll. So piece. there's a, there's certainly yeah. an o opportunity with, you know, with with AI, with you know, machine learning, certainly more analytics, bringing that to the manufacturing world. Oh, so yeah. that's clearly fundamental yep. to your strategies. Is that, in your view, the tipping point to get really this whole market <coughs> moving? I think, I mean, I would agree with you. I, I, I mean, there's a sort of a accumulation of digital capabilities. Certainly, mobility has sort of proved that it's important, but it's a little bit of a nice to have. Um, you know, some of the um, innovations around, um, you know, user experience is, is a really important, but nice to have. I think that is the game changer. Mm -hmm. When you can use data as a, as, a, as a weapon, a competitive weapon, that you can make decisions faster and how you discount your product or how you identify a shortage faster than someone else, that's where, you know, there's real money that what comes about, out of that. What about blockchain? We, we, we hear a lot about blockchain in the, in the supply yeah. chain, cutting out the middleman. Um, we haven't heard much here about it. It's not something, I'm, we're going to ask Charles. Somebody said to me, once Charles gets on it, that boom, the company's yeah. behind it. But how real is that in, in, in manufacturing and supply chain specifically? Is it just way too early? You think there's potential there? Have you looked at it? We've, we, we've uh, obviously we've looked at it. We've you know we've worked we've worked on with customers on prototypes. There's a, there's a couple areas, you know. There's a lot of hype. You know, as you guys know, you talked a lot. Of, there's a lot of hype in that space. It's certainly unproven in a lot of areas. Um, but we think in the area of um, you know supply chain financing, blockchain has a, a very very powerful. You know, where you have multi parties, you've got suppliers and logistics companies and banks and all who need a piece of information, we need you know, distributed capabilities around that. We think there's a big potential in some of that area. And you know, we're talking, we're working with some of the banks on that. We think in the area of um, getting deeper into the supply chain around sustainability um, and so the ethical and traceability of, of, of the supply chain. You know, we are going down, you know, we got customers that, you know, in the peril business that are going down 
to the farms. They want to know exactly exactly the, the lineage of all of their stuff that's going into their product that's ending up in a consumer. And that's a, potentially a more efficient mechanism to have all these different entities you know, collaborating on a, on a distributed model. So, I mean, and especially when we talk about the GT Nexus network, there's natural extensions to it, that it already is a common platform that, you know, serving a, a wide variety of companies, uh, logistics companies, manufacturers. So there's a lot of natural exit points from that sort of, that integrated network to support a couple of these more extended processes that are a little bit more um, distributed. Yeah, so smart contracts yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe fits there. Um, and you talked about distributed a couple of times. What about IOT? The pendulum seems to be swinging now. Obviously, cloud is hot, it's kind of recentralization, but IOT, it's a whole new world. You got a lot of IT companies kind of pushing the IT model top down into operations technology, and we don't think that's the way it's going to work. Right. <laughs> the OT guys are actually going to, going to drive the standards and the trends. What are you saying? <clears throat> well, I think, you know, hey, the people that have the, I mean, the that make the equipment, you know, make the uh, the pipelines. Hey, obviously they got a big stake in this. Right. You know, they understand how their commit works. They know how to attach the sensors. They know how to you know, translate the things going on in the machines into into data. We're going to be and we're going to be taking that data and how do you connect it to a business process? Mm -hmm. So that's something that they don't they don't understand. They don't understand you know how how a heat event could translate can connect to a, a maintenance process and how do you deploy a technician with the right part to go in there so they can offer some proactive service. So I think there's going to be a, a very tight partnership, you know, where, you know, people coming from the, the equipment up or the, the asset up um, connect with the people that understand process analytics and um, sort of execution. Yeah you, you, yeah, you talked about sustainability there just a moment yeah. ago. So obviously companies, uh, what we know, their focus is uh, changing in that regard, right? People are paying more attention, and a lot of that's being customer driven, right? Too, right. At the same time, too, um, you know, in terms of distribution, in terms of manufacturing, customer expectations are changing too, right? right. We expect things m on a much different timetable. So, how are you helping your clients, you know, recognize all those things? Like you're thinking about tomorrow, today, yep. and trying to get them to address that in terms of their technology plays down the road to meet these really fast changing demands. Yeah, I mean, one of, the, one of, our, one of our really uh, dominant industries is distribution. Um, you know, probably three out of five distribution companies around the world run our, run, our, run our software. So distribution is a space, you know, sits typically between the manufacturing world and the, and the consumer. The retail world is under tremendous pressure, you know. While Amazon is inching into distribution-centric industries, so there's a lot of pressure from that, but there's also rising expectations that you have to do instantaneous fulfillment that you have to provide you know, complete vis visibility into where my order is, when am I going to get it, because I don't want to carry this, this, the supply, you got you to carry it. So we're seeing a, a big, big uh, rejuvenation of that industry, a little, because the pressure, pressure's driving them to rethink you know, e-commerce, to rethink um, the types of services they're providing to their, you know, their, their companies, that even in some cases they're sneaking into retail and having you know, that types of experience because they need to they need to compete in different ways. And I think that's always, the industry change is, is, is good for companies like us that have a lot of experience right. in the industry because we, yeah, we can help them. You know, and they need a catalyst, right? They need a catalyst to go out and, and, and change and rethink how they operate. Um, and uh, it's created a pretty interesting opportunity. So I wonder, Rod, if you could talk a little bit about, um, I know you're only a few months in, but just your impressions of the differentiation. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you give us the the bumper sticker pitch. Why in four? How are you different? So I mean, three things. Just net it out. Three things. Uh, industry, and we talk a lot about industry. We talk a lot about last mile. It's real. It's compelling to our customers. They they're tired of having to finish the software for the vendor at their at their site. They want the they want the provider to finish the software and, and take it to to meet their their unique needs. Um, Two is I think even though we're smaller than some of the, the, the big, big names out there, I think pound for pound we, we out-innovate almost every company. 
and I can talk very specifically, you know, transitioning from a, a very, very large competitor. When you actually look and get into the detail of what we've actually delivered around AI or what we've actually um, delivered around, you know, analytics or mobility, and I, a pound for pound, you know, we, we fight way above our, our weight on that front, and I think, you know, if you look at even what we've done with hook and loop digital over the years, you know, the, the types of proof points we have with customers are something that um, very few of our competitors could boast. So I think this, you know, digital overused term, but this sort of understanding of how this new technology world, world works and be able to translate to it, that to our customers is huge. And three is culture. I think um, we have a, a fast oriented culture. The, there's not a lot of levels. Uh, we can cut through uh, the nonsense for our customers pretty quickly. Um, we organize around our customers. We don't have 3,000 sales teams trying to sell them piece parts, so we, we can do the solution thing. Um, and you know, we're, we're really working hard to differentiate on you know customer centricity. Uh, you know, I made the comment yesterday at our executive forum that you know, in general, you know, service and enterprise software stinks. You know, you wouldn't accept. You know, if, if a retailer was treating you the way the average enterprise software, you wouldn't accept it, right? You'd go somewhere else. Uh, we've had the benefit, well, well, the benefit, or we've had customers that have such big investments in us, they have to deal with it. And we need to, we have an opportunity to, to fix that, to change that, to um, really reorganize and reorient our customer around the outcomes that matter to them. Um, and it's so important, if, we're, if they're going to trust us, and it's really about trust. They're going to trust us to run their applications, our mission critical, critical applications in our cloud. We, we need to really you know, change the game on that front. And we're doing a lot of things structurally. You know, like for example, uh, maybe someone talked about, we're taking development, customer support, and cloud operations and integrating that into a common organization. So there's no finger pointing. If something goes down, it's not, well, it's the network, it's a bug, it's a knowledge issue, it's one team that's accountable for making sure that we resolve that issue rapidly. Same on the field side, so now we're organizing, you know, for manufacturing and distribution, really all the resources we need to both sell and service our customers, you know, deliver for our customers in a common team, so there's, there's accountability. I know both sides, there's a product side, product and cloud ops side, there's accountability, and from a sort of customer engagement, account management, there's accountability. Um, and then, you know, we got to do a lot of things around service and automation and, you know, better proactive, you know, we're running their cloud, we should be able to tell them, hey, this isn't running optimally. We need to come in and do this change. I mean, that's where we need to get. Um, mm. That's what the industry needs to get, and you know, we want to get there first. Well, yeah. you're on the right path. Yeah. Uh, and uh, again, congratulations on the new uh, position. Yeah, thank you. And uh, we appreciate the time here today, and uh, yeah. wish you all the best. Down I appreciate the road. what you guys do. I love your I love your thank show you. and content. Thank you, Rod. Yeah, yeah. No, we thank appreciate you. that. Thank you, sir. Back with more here on the Cube. We are in Informed 2018. We're in Washington, D.C.